Hey, what's going on guys? It's Spunkify here on behalf of MMOBomb.com and welcome to our live stream preview of the Alpha of EverQuest Landmark or EverQuest Next Landmark. Ah, I always get them confused. EverQuest Next Landmark, the uh, crafting social MMORPG currently in Alpha from, of course, SOE. Uh, I have been playing around with this just for a little tiny bit, maybe hey, a day or what's so. what's going on, guys? And uh, overall, it's a pretty, it's pretty great. It's pretty interesting. It's still early, it's still rough, um, as you'll notice throughout the stream with the uh, random sort of freezes and uh, drops in uh, frame rate. So apologies for those. It is, of course, alpha. Currently, it is nighttime on the server, and they recently had a uh, patch that added in a, a better sort of claim system, so you can kind of see where you're on the map. This is the one of the many, many servers that they have, or zones that they have available currently in the alpha. Now, you may have noticed like all these little flags here. Uh, if I actually turn all these off, uh, this is the map in general. And when you scroll into the map, uh, you'll see these jagged, sort of rough areas. Those are either places that people have built stuff on. As you can see, there's like a flat plane here or they have sort of contoured the earth somewhat. Now, it's not really a lot of detail here. Uh, you'll have to actually go to that location to see what they've done in person. I don't know if that's going to change in the future where we get more and more detail, but it is kind of cool because it's sort of like a satellite view. You can rotate the map here, see things from other angles, see what people have been up to. That looks pretty cool, although on the map it, it kind of looks fairly boring. <laughs> this is a bunch of squares, but I'm sure in person it's pretty awesome. And my claim, where I am doing everything, is right here. So I'm a little bit outside of my claim currently. I am on a mission, and that mission is to create a bronze uh, pickaxe, if you will. Now, of course, this game has a tier system when it comes to your items and your progression, both in crafting and in, of course, uh, what you can build. You actually have to progress in tiers with how you build your location and what tools you have access to. So currently, if I go into my my little claim here, as you can see, the jungle treehouse is what eventually I want it to become. But this area here is sort of my designated area. I can build within this area here, and I can make drastic changes in this area without having to mine everything out. So I have a couple tools, as I mentioned before. On the three, there is a small tool here that allows me to add in terrain. Now that is based on whatever material I have currently selected. So you notice here, as far as metal, I have tin and copper. Then I have wood, and the wood comes in several different types, thatch, shingles, you know, cut in certain directions. Burled wood is a more dark uh, dark style of wood. Stone, different types of stone. Dirt from, of course, digging up all the dirt to find the stone. And then uh, you have different types of, uh, you know, granite and what have you. And then as well as tour tourmaline. Tourmaline. Can't really say that correctly. So it's got a nice little system here to sort of wade through and see what you have already collected, as well as some shapes and templates that you can create later on. Now, all of that's nice. Um, currently, for me, you generally want to build up a large cache of resources before you start beginning, unlike uh, Minecraft, where it's basically a block or two uh, for each resource. You get a varying amount of that resource when you collect it. So for example, if I roll out here with my Founder's Pickaxe, which serves as both an axe as well as a pick, uh, and I chop down this tree here, I get a little small progression bar, and on the bottom left-hand side, you'll see that I'm collecting you know, anywhere between five to 15 amounts of plain wood, occasionally some boiled wood that's in blue, uh, which is a more rare form of wood, of course, that's why it's blue, and then some amber leaf and jute, other random sort of ingredients that I'll use in crafting. Now, currently, whenever I'm done sort of cutting down a tree, the tree will disappear. Earlier on in the alpha, the trees would explode, uh, but I guess that was creating somewhat of a performance issue currently, and so they've removed that. Now, of course, alpha, a lot of things are missing. A lot of uh, visual effects may be missing as well. I do have to mention that I have the shadow set down to low because it does improve the frame rate quite a bit uh, for streaming purposes. The frame rate can be quite uh, all over the place, and it's just a part of it being in the alpha. I'll have times when I'm getting a steady 60, 70 frames with everything turned up, and then it'll just drop to five out of nowhere. Now here's an example of me actually mining, and if I hit shift and scroll in, you'll be able to see it from first person here. Mining, unlike say in Minecraft, is done voxel-based. So as you can see here, I can make incremental sort of uh, chops, if you will, some picks at the ground, 
and be able to make a hole that is much more organic than something that you would see in uh, Minecraft or Terraria or any other style of uh, you know uh, exploration. There are there are some games which do employ voxel-based exploration and crafting. Um, Starforge comes to mind as one of an indie project that has that. Uh, but ooh, some tin down here. This is exactly what we want. So in order to get to most of the tin, it's connected to generally a uh, copper vein. So I have to actually mine out the copper to find where the tin is. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll notice I'm still sort of crafting this hole. And it's not a, you know, again, if I actually pull out of it, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's pre-cut. It looks very much organic, and you can kind of see down in there where I have to go. So if I scroll back in, I can go down to this tin, which is currently what I need to craft. So yeah, there have been other uh, games that do employ voxel-based sort of destruction, uh, but I have to say EverQuest Next Landmark seems to be the one with the best uh, sort of detail in destruction. I mean, there's a lot of detail here, a lot of curves, edges that I can see that I created myself through you know specific uh, hammers and through specific uh, choices and where I cut into the ground. Now I'm sort of stuck here, and the camera can be a little bit wonky when you get into corners, it can be hard to find how you get out. All right, there we go. Always want to sort of craft at, a cor at an angle so you can find your way out. What's going on, Woeful Ninja? Just looked up to see there. You're on the server. Everybody's welcome to try to find me on the server. If they're playing, welcome to find a tr try and find my plot. I am on the uh, Unnamed World Bluff Tier 1 server area, and I'm in, located in the top left area right here. So if you want to see how my claim is going, in fact, anybody can walk into my claim, although they won't be able to currently craft in it. They'll be able to go here and actually use any of my equipment that I have uh, thus far made. This equipment is made, uh, in, it's actually accessible in the like main hub area where you spawn, uh, but you can use anybody's equipment out in the world that you find. It's just better to have your own, uh, your location, so you don't have to travel very far in order to you know craft certain types of materials. So I have sort of this forge, and then a, a sawmill mill of a workbench of type uh, of sorts. And this ba basically gives me access to a lot of the crafting materials and a lot of the, the crafting accessories that I need uh, to build better and better things. So building tools down here, the eventual tool that I would like to create is a selection tool, which allows me to select areas uh, that I've made and copy them, uh, move them around, scale them, etc. like that. Uh, you start off with the add tool, the delete tool, and the heal tool, which brings everything back to normal. So you got an add, and delete, and a normalizing a tool. Uh, but this allows you to get a little bit more creative. And then from here, you'll also be able to craft a line tool, which allows you to make a line of sorts. Alright, so outside of this, of course, you have the crafting stations. There are different stations that uh, have a different variety of recipes. Again, this is all alpha, so it's uh, rudimentary at this point. Uh, not a lot of stuff in here, but different pickaxes are, are allow you to craft and sort of yield different amounts of material as you uh, progress to the world. You know, as far as how fast you can and collect it, and how wide of area, how much resources. I'm going for the bronze pickaxe here, which is actually better than the founder's pickaxe, which I have currently. The bronze pick here is merely for actually uh, picking out the ground, whereas the pickaxe is a dual functioning. Uh, tool, so I will still have to use the fast copper axe in conjunction with that. Uh, but the bronze pick here is better than the founder's pickaxe. However, I do need to make three more tin ingots. I need two more boiled wood planks and five elemental tin, which currently I have only ten. And in order to make tin ingots, I have to also have elemental tin, which means, of course, that as soon as I start using it for this, I'll have to get more. So there is sort of a double dipping system there. Things to consider, guys. Things to consider. Alright, so first things first, I can go over here and I know I have to make some burled wooden planks. If I go back, there's a little bit of frame drop, like I mentioned. And occasionally they'll be bugging out and you'll see my character do weird things. Uh, so I need to make three or two more burled wood planks. To do that, I can come over here and I can look at the wood. Here's the planks. And I can make two, which is exactly the amount. You can see it requires 60 resources of boiled wood. I have 136, so I have just enough there to make two, which is required. Which pretty much means, and as you can see there, 
I can make the, the wooden plank uh, fairly easily. I don't have to actually uh, make each one individually. It makes them as a whole. Uh, but it still can be a little bit more feedbacky. I wish you could say. Um, you can actually click in here. Oh, they changed it. Originally, you couldn't click in here and type an amount. Now you can do so. So that's nice. All right, so let's go ahead and find us some tin. Now, tin usually doesn't just appear in the world. Uh, you predominantly have to go and find it connected to another. Yeah, see right here, this is dirt, and that is right there. I think that's steel or iron. So usually you have to find it connected to uh, one of these copper veins here. I need a good amount more. Now, of course, you can use any resource to build with. And uh, building can be done in small increments or large increments. So you don't actually have to place individual blocks like you do, say, in, in Minecraft. You can place a larger portion of that block or just copy something that you've already made. So there is some flexibility there. It looks like the tin is right here. I can go into first person and see it a little bit better. The server does have a full day and night cycle right now. It is currently in the night portion of that. It can get fairly dark, especially if you dig down into the ground. I gotta get there. In terms of how fast you can craft things or how fast you can build things, you do need quite a lot of resources to craft anything of like mention. Of uh, you. You can build like rudimentary, you know, small things like you could a dirt house in, say, Minecraft fairly quickly. But anything that you want to build that's complex, you're going to need to do uh, quite a lot of farming for. One thing I should mention is that I think it's pretty awesome. You'll notice here that as I was digging down, uh, there was an actual, as you can see, there was a, a tree branch, a, a tree log um, right here. And essentially trunk what is this called I mean it kind of just juts out of the ground there but basically you'll find that if you're digging down near some of the larger trees uh, you'll actually encounter uh, some of the, the the branches and the the root system that's what I'm thinking of oh man it got me some I, this is really rare stuff so some agate agate this is a pretty rare resource that is uh, luminous that we can turn into light stones couple other things so quite happy to get this Let's mine this all out here there's quite a lot of different resources you can find and uh, some of them of course require different types of pickaxes to access um, some of those resources you're gonna find more in other areas uh, this is a tier 1 area so say a tier 2 or tier 3 will have better resources uh, to find however it'll have less of these sort of starting resources that player would really want to have uh, when they began their journey Looks like more of this. It's rare. I'm going to go ahead and keep taking it. Yeah, so you, you have to get better crafting stations. Uh, there is a progression system. You, you get better axes, etc. And it seems like the axes themselves uh, have some sort of uh, quality level. Uh, when I crafted this axe here, it said it was a fast copper axe. It was a common pick. And it was green. I don't know if there is some sort of like RNG system whereby you could possibly get a blue uh, or a epic, you know, copper pickaxe depending on the, the crafting level. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, but also keep in mind the crafting system isn't complete, so I wouldn't say everything you see in the current crafting system is what you should expect in live and vice versa. Uh, when you lose your claim flag, uh, what I have found to be uh, a solution is to go back to where did you you place it on the ground, right? You took it out of your bag and then did you put it in like uh, the safe? I had someone, a friend of mine, lose his, but he had already placed it on the ground. And he was able to log out and then log back in after a certain amount of time. And he would he found his claim uh, where he had previously placed it. Because his claim had disappeared and he didn't have a new flag. Alright, so I'm just going to keep chopping away here. Get a little bit closer. 
I would have to say that uh, the progression feels a little bit slow uh, at first. It does kind of feel like it does take its time to sort of... I like how I can make this sort of nice little... Uh, ooh, the resource keeps going there. I can make a, a nice little tunnel here. But it does feel like you need an excessive amount of certain resources right now to craft certain things. Like, to make a bronze pickaxe, you have to have so much of, like, copper and of other resources. I'm like, man, it's just a bronze pickaxe. Like, it's, it's pretty basic, you know? Alright, so we're going to make our way up here to the surface. Again, it's a little hard there, but, oh. <laughs> you can actually see below uh, and see sort of like the root structure there of a lot of these trees. But it does add, because you got to think about it. You know, unlike a normal MMO where you don't dig down or anything like that, you don't see the root structure of trees. But in an MMO like EverQuest Next, uh, you of course would see that kind of root structure because you're digging around it, you're digging below them. And currently, there isn't a subterranean sort of level. I can even cut this guy out here, which is what I'll do. Um, there isn't a subterranean level, although eventually there will be. Yes, I can. Hold on just a second here. cut through this tree really quickly here you can delete trees on your own claim so if you're a, tr a big trees in the way you don't want to cut it down or anything like that you can merely delete it and uh, then you'll be able to let's go ahead and get out of here there we go all right so I can hit shift and scroll back to get out and as you notice there there is a small little just a small little cut I made into the ground as you can see or you, I don't know if you can see it really well, but yeah, there it is, as you can see. Just sort of mine my way out of there. It was very natural looking. Alright, so this is where I am currently on the map. You'll notice in this top left-hand corner here, this is my claim. If I want to see everybody else's claim, in comparison, you can go to No Permissions and see how everything's spaced out. Generally speaking, it does make you space them out quite evenly, uh, so you can't get them so tight together. Uh, but again, this is early, so you know claim sizes, those are subject to change, and I believe they will change. Um, and you can have larger or smaller claims depending on your claim flag. So again, just trying to get some more tin. Tin is generally just found by mining out copper. And there's quite a lot of copper in the world here. You can even see large copper veins just sort of spread out on the map. Which makes it a lot easier for sort of finding your initial, like where you're going to craft, essentially. So apparently there's, there we go, there's a large copper vein right here. And again, I don't really need the copper. I mean, the elemental copper actually, which is the, the rare form of copper, is going to be need, uh, needed in the future. Uh, but right now, I'm sort of just focused on finding 10. I think 10 is the resource I need. And this is honestly... I mean, the act of craft, the act of you know mining like this is is quite interesting, and I I, I do enjoy it. Uh, but it's the exploration, it's the the feeling of just trying to find where you can go and what you can do, and you know what you're going to discover on the map essentially like that. That that's a huge sort of drawing point for me. Um, and keep in mind, as Alpha, it doesn't have the, any of the combat, it doesn't have any of the interactions. There there's certain features that are certainly missing. Uh, and are features that I would say uh, are going to flush this game out a lot more than just a simple crafting MMO. I mean, a lot of people have to remember what Minecraft was uh, when it started. Now, this tree's in the way, so I'm going to cut it out of the way so I can get to the vein beneath it. Alright, so we're cutting through about halfway through this tree here. And you do need, I mean, all this extra resource that you do get trying to find these uh, individual resources, there are important especially if you want to build something which is what I'm assuming you want to do uh, because you're going to need quite a lot just to build medium size uh, stones. One little gripe I have is sort of the cap on amount of resources that you can currently have. You can have about 200,000 resources or so uh, in your inventory which is a virtual inventory of sorts. You have your main inventory here but this isn't where your actual resources are. These are merely like your costumes and what have you. Turn on a different costume there. Um, but your resources are, are stored in a separate area on the left. So you can see how much of each type of resource you currently own. So I have 4,854 
uh, uh, the copper ore, and then I have a thousand stone. So I can hold uh, quite a lot more. But again, right now, not so much focused on the building, mainly because building at this point without sort of improved tools, you could do it, uh, but it's going to take quite a while. So focusing on getting your your better sort of crafting, you know, initial tools. I mean, keep in mind this this crafting tool that I'm using is the is the founder's crafting tool, so it's slightly better than what you want to start with in general. But it's not going to be. Is that a moon? I see the moon from all the way over there. All right, so I gotta find these tin. I gotta find some tin. So unfortunately, I'm relegated here. I think that's tin. There we go. So now we're getting some tin ore. That's what we need. Finally, get some more tin here. And so, and you know, it's a random amount of tin that you find. Yes, I, I've tried Star Forge. I actually know the the developers of Star Forge. Forge, not Forge. If you look on Reddit. Um, the post that made Starforge famous on Reddit, I was the person who posted that. Because I thought that was quite interesting. At the time, it was free to play. So, of course, I wanted everybody to know about this free to play game. It was pretty awesome. But since then, the developers have decided to make it uh, buy to play. Which, I mean, I don't have anything against that. They are indie developers, of course. Anything over here? I think I'm pretty much out of 10. There may be a couple spots here and there. With a couple more pieces of tin. No, it looks like it's pretty much all out. We'll go ahead and mine our way out of here. I've got to sort of make my way out there a little bit more. I do like the fact that you create these really natural holes uh, when you're mining. It makes it just feel a lot more organic and a lot more like exploratory, essentially. Alright, so let's come up here. And after this, we'll go back and we'll do a little bit of initial crafting here. See if we can create our new axe. And uh, we'll do a little bit of exploring too, just to show off what other people have created in the game. Uh, because there's quite a lot. Ooh, looks like a nice little vein here. I like the fact that my pickaxe has this nice little light behind it so you can kind of illuminate the area. And so every time I actually swing my pickaxe and I break something, my frame rate drops about 30 frames a second, which I think is pretty funny. There's a there's actually a voxel smoothing uh, there's a voxel smoothing element to this game where if you turn off the voxel smoothing, everything appears as tiny little Minecraft blocks. So it's got this sort of extra smoothing that happens on top of it. Uh, that makes everything look, you know, like more organic. Uh, but there is an element of boxes even to EverQuest next landmark. You just can't see them because everything gets moved out. All right, so we've mined out that area here, and uh, you can mine through a mountain if you so desire. Uh, I do not currently, so I'm going to run back over here and see what we can craft. I mean, I just can't help going for this copper. It's because I need lots of tin. Now, you can even make, which, is, which I think is cool, you can even make a grapple hook. So you can grapple the different areas. I mean, what what game like this doesn't need a grapple hook, right? Like, grapple hook's so important. Looks like the sun is coming up in the game. This, the day and night cycle isn't quite finalized. It, you'll notice there's like a lot of uh, jumpiness to it. It'll sort of like become day at, at some points. But alpha status is alpha status. So a lot of that can be, of course, forgiven. I'm, I'm really actually pretty impressed with how the game is currently as it is. I mean, you can really kind of just get a feel of how the general gameplay, you can feel like the baseline gameplay is, is solid. Like there's going to be a good amount of crafting, you know, a good amount of uh, creation. And really, I'm just sort of intrigued at how are they going to go? Where are they going to go from here? What are they going to add to make, you know, people hooked and sort of stay around? They mentioned that there's going to be PvE in the game. Uh, some fighting, you know, of course, this is supposed to be a separate MMO from EverQuest Next, uh, which is their main sort of EverQuest MMO, but uh, they still want to support this and they still want to add new content, so there's still going to be some combat in it. Alright, so going back to our claim here, there's my little claim flag and my rudimentary earlier attempt at making a wall. 
So let's come over here. And uh, I need to make three more ingots. And then I should be good. So if I go down to metal, I can go and say, okay, I want to make three. So I'll craft three there. And it costs 100 ingots to do that. And if we look at the, the pick, the bronze, hey, look at that. I am able to craft my bronze pickaxe. So we'll go ahead and craft that. Da -na -na -na. And we craft ourselves a bronze pickaxe. So now my bronze pickaxe here is a resource rating of 3, a size of 110, speed of 92, and damage of 42. And more importantly, it can craft or it can mine iron, aquamarine, metals, and gems of lower resource rating. And the resource rating is 3.0. So if you notice here, if we actually compare that now to our just simple Founder's Pickaxe, which apparently has disappeared from my inventory upon removing it. I know you're there. Is it on my character? There it is. Alright, so let's go ahead then and uh, just drag that off. If we compare it, you'll see that the size is 80, the speed is much lower, and the damage is, lower, is higher. The damage is actually higher, but I don't really know what the damage is for. Per se. So, but now that we have that, let's drop that back on there so I can quickly get to it. But if you look, when I actually go here, the, the size that I can mine now is uh, slightly larger than what it was before. And if we find something, this is what something I previously could not mine, which I believe is iron. And I should now be able to iron, uh, yep, dirt, nope, that's dirt, there we go. 52 iron ore, and bam, look at that quickly able to mine myself some iron ore and you notice I, I do it a little bit faster as well so we're on our way to making progress now of course I'm not going to spend the whole time here just mining that would be an atrocious way to spend an hour but I am going to get this iron ore because I'm I feel compelled it's it's almost like an addiction you're just like yeah keep giving it to me and it keeps showing up and you keep seeing more and more and you're like yeah give me more give me more let's keep going Alright, so it looks like we're maybe getting to the end of this iron ore here. Lots of dirt. If you wanted to build a dirt house, you could do that pretty quickly. Dirt is always prevalent. Man, look at all this iron. Holy crap. It's just... Can't help it. Can't help it, guys. What is this? It's a vein of something. Ah, it's too low. Something even my bronze pickaxe cannot get. What is that? Hmm... Are there caves in this build? Uh, there are no caves currently. In fact, if I bring up the map here and scroll to the side and rotate, you'll be able to actually see how far down the ground goes. And if you look, the answer is it's pretty much sand all the way through. There's no real extra subterranean level. And I don't know if this will be visible on the, on the, you know, the final build, if you'll be able to see it from the sides. Uh, but in the current build, you can obviously tell that there there isn't really anything uh, subterranean as of yet. There is going to be, of course, uh, is on the surface. The name of my claim is Spunkify. Here, I'll go back over to it. You can, when you run over to it, you'll be able to see it. And it's Spunkify's claim number one, Jungle Tree House. Because my plan is to eventually have a house of trees in between these house of trees. So there'll be like a connecting little like walkway here and then there'll be some stuff built around it. Because everybody's just building on a mountainside or just building a house. I wanted to build something intertwined around the trees. Now unfortunately, you can't build into the tree. You know, the tree is a static prop. But you can build around the tree. So I'm going to attempt to do my best to sort of build a structure around it. Alright, so now that I've done that... Uh, let's see what little crafting we can do. Now, if I wanted to add a particular object here, I could go in the left, and I can even add, you know, corners and what have you. Spheres, if you will. What's a resource that we have a lot of? I know what we have a lot of. We have a lot of just dirt. So if I wanted to make a dirt sphere, a mound of dirt, let's see if I wanted to make it right here. Bam! Mound of dirt. So uh, let's let's try to make a let's make something a little bit interesting here. Let's come over and then we'll give it a nose. All right, and so let's change this resource then. 
Give it some grassy eyes. And there we go. Look at that. Just like that, I made some kind of face. So you do get a lot of options uh, for just like generic stuff that you can start with. And you actually can choose the direction. Uh, by hitting shift tab, you can choose a lot of the elements of how you're going to change uh, the piece. It sort of has this snap property to it, so it sort of snaps the surfaces. So trying to make organic stuff, at least with the basic tools when you're adding, uh, is hard to do. But you can scale uh, pretty much anything. So I'm able to scale those down to size, although it does use uh, varying amounts of uh, materials when you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this guy right here. And in fact, I'm going to I'm gonna just going to cut out a little bit of his eye here. I know that sounds barbaric, but that's too small of a tool. Let's go back to this cube. I'm going to cut out a little of his eye. Because eventually... There, that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to have to add that back in. I can heal it, actually, by coming over and just healing that eye. Oh, that eye is not... Uh... Oh, oh my god, I'm sorry. I messed up your face. Well, we'll, we'll just come back to you. I was going to put, like, little black things in the eyes, but whatever. Dirt boobs? Uh, yeah, it kind of looked like it could have been dirt boobs, right? Alright, so why don't we go ahead then and we will make our way over towards the middle. I'll show you the other biome. And in the, you know, while we're sort of traversing that way. Hey, look, you can see. Man, I wonder if people are going to go visit. Look, you can see it from the map. That's awesome. It's, you can even see that I messed up with the, with the eye. So there's my claim currently. And you'll actually notice that it shows like what I've dug out. So you see I've dug out this area and then I dug out around this tree because I thought I was going to be able to put like blocks, uh, but uh, it didn't work correctly. So it just looks like I dug for no reason. All right, so there's some stuff over here we can take a look at. It only puts it back to what it was before I built. Ah, that is, uh, that is good to know. All right. So it looks like there's actually some interesting resource over here I saw. You can sometimes see it, it'll glitch through the ground. This guy here, has he built anything? We're going to visit his claim on the way to some of the more larger claims. Is it that what I was trying to go for? Alright, well, let's find out. So here's another person's claim. There's like nothing here really. Welcome, thank you. He's got himself his uh, little void bank, but nothing else really. Although that is a very scenic. I Props to you, man. You picked the great spot. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on here. I want to get to this. This, this is an area I was before. There was some pretty interesting stuff. There is actually a tower up here, and I think that tower is one that the developers actually created because it looks way too perfect for something that one of us has made so far. Control Z. I should have done that. I should have thought of that, man. Control Z, of course. The age-old copy and paste word pad. All right, so here's the, the tower. Now again, consider that this tower has been built using in-game tools. Even the developers use the same tools as uh, what we, the players, use. And I can feel my frame rate really struggling now as I try to go up this mountain. For some reason, I don't know, I guess it's because it's loading. The things just tend to slow down ever so dramatically. See if I can just get up here and sort of like float up this mountain. There's no real like indication of how you're going to be able to go up mountains in the, in ooh, in the uh, in the final build, but currently you sort of just float up them. Here you can see I'm just I'm just mining out some uh, some stone and iron ore here, just right on the side of the mountain. And you, generally speaking, veins do go for for quite a while. And I like the fact that I can go in first person mode and just simply, you know, peek in there and be like, oh, hey, there's a little bit more. But look at that. You see how the shadows just cast in? That looks so beautiful. I mean, I, I, I can't help but just be like, I want to actually uh, let's explore a little more and uh, get a little closer. I imagine once they added, like, see, I think one of the big appeals of mining into the ground and say, 
um, Minecraft, for example, is the fact that you can stumble into those sort of caves, those subterranean levels with monsters and different things for you to discover. Uh, in EverQuest Next Landmark, the current alpha version, there's there's no sort of uh, worry about that. I'm just going to keep going up here. There's no monsters and there's no subterranean levels. So generally speaking, you're just mining on the surface unless you're trying to mine down to create something. All right, so let's come up here. See if I can mine this out, whatever it is. Aha, I can. So aquamarine, aquamarine, you are now mine. Get it, mine. And I'm just gonna keep getting this stuff here. Now currently you cannot actually do anything with other players in terms of you're not able to build with them or anything. Um, that is yet to come. Of course, that's gonna be a main thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at this building instead of me just passing it. So here's this building here, as you can see, the Highlands Watch, Tier 3 Crafting Station and stuff. Feel free to use them. It's a pretty awesome building here. And of course, I can't destroy this or anything like this. Now this is actually improved. This was not, these sort of rudimentary stairs were not here the first time I was here. So whoever's been building this, whether it be a dev or someone else, uh, they've been working on it because this was not here last time. So I like that. It's it's an actual progression, a feel of progression. You come here and this is something that's done that was not done before. You know, you can actually see the world sort of evolve around you as players continuously add stuff. Oh, where's the top here? And they, they're not quite done, it seems. They have made a, a stairway to nowhere. Can't get quite up there yet, but you see, you can, you can kind of see. We can just make our way down. It's a little bit hard to turn the camera in these tight corners or this guy's place. All right, but here's the tier three crafting stations, as you can see. Here's one station you haven't seen before. And you're basically able to uh, take all the sand and sift it and try to find some more interesting stuff. Well, you can take the dirt as well as the stone. I wanted to use the dirt here and uh, craft as much as I can, which in this case will be 10. Because I'm not going to use dirt. And it's a good way to just get rid of all of the dirt that you have in your inventory. So wait for that to finish and then we'll continue our journey. You can make bags of gems, bags of ores. These are both small bags of ores or bags of gems if you use stone, which makes sense. Stone would generally include gems. So we got four copper, two silver, three copper, two copper ore, copper ore, three tin ore, three copper ore, four copper ore, copper ore, and five tin ore. So you get a lot of sort of generic stuff. Sometimes you get some pretty awesome stuff like tin ore is really useful. Over here, you can even make worked marble, worked obsidian. So there, you can make really sort of interesting, uh, ooh, nice accessories here. Small bands that Ware has a chance to find additional rare resources while harvesting. And this one, like, slightly feels a little bit more powerful. It jumps. So there's these objects, these these items that you can wear on your character that give you sort of these powers or extra features. And this one, this one gives you a little bit higher jumps. This one allows you to find more resources. Uh, it looks like this one allows you to do more damage with harvesting tools, which I guess would mean that you would break through uh, certain materials faster. And the breeze band allows you to wield their harvesting tools faster. So I guess swing them faster. So there's different items that actually allow you to swing faster or uh, to collect more or collect faster, all that kind of stuff. And I can even close this door if I wanted to, which is pretty awesome. So look at that. I can even close that door. How, how immersive is that? Being able to close the door, holy crap, someone made a house down here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Yeah, I'm not planning to get rid of all my stone. I do want to use stone. Uh, dirt though, I don't really care about dirt. I have no plans on making something with dirt. All right, so Moonrise Ridge at the base of Heaven's Peak. Bakery under construction. Nice to know there is a bakery here. And again, oh man, frame rate really taking a dive here. Someone has decided to make a giant pillar out of copper. We've got ourselves a, a building here. 
Let's go inside. Oh, I just rolled inside. So you can see the basic frame structure of this building. He's actually building it into the tree, which is pretty nice. He's got a little bit of built here. Not too much, but I can see where this is headed. You've got yourself a furnace in this tree, man. It's the only problem. But yeah, I, I like where this is uh, like where this is going. I like the, the inlay. That's a lot of nice particulate work. So you can build some really pretty cool things over time. We'll, we'll just see what else we discover on our way back to the gate. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some more of this one here. It is a big copper lightning rod, yeah. I think, uh, ooh, man, this is a big node. All right, I think I mined it out now. All right, that's good. It's funny, but one of my friends actually has this too. He, uh, <laughs> he spent all night just sort of mining into a mountain straight. That was his enjoyment in the game. And I mean, you can get enjoyment in very basic things in Landmark. You know, because the, it's the whole sense of exploration. I mean, exploration in general may seem boring from the outside, uh, but when it's you doing the exploring and you finding the resources and, and discovering new things, then it actually becomes really, really engaging and gripping. Because you never know what you're going to find or, or what, you know, what people are going to be building. There's just a lot of sort of discovery in it. And again, I do apologize for the frame rate drops going anywhere in this world can i get this yes i can so it got me some tin ore here wow barely ever is there actually tin ore just lying in the side of a mountain so i'm gonna go ahead and collect this you can see all the resources sort of just flowing around me all right so i've gonna oh what in the world do we have here do we have some gold can i collect this no i cannot harvest that Dang it. So there we have a gold node that was actually connected to the 10. So I'm not able to get that, unfortunately. And what is this? This is something interesting. I got some agate. More of that. Agate, I guess is the way you would say it. Useful if you're wanting to make anything shimmering. Let's go ahead and pick this up here. Looks like we're back down to dirt. All right. So again, you just find these really random and rare resources, and coupled with the progression system, you really sort of get a sense that you can find even more rare resources. I mean, resources really become sort of this unique and, and uh, sought-after commodity that players, you know, you can build a lot or you can go and find rare resources and then sell those to the builders. So here's someone, they've made themselves a basic hut, if you will, it's quite nice. And these are just, you know, generic tools. These aren't all the tools. I don't think this includes the smoothing tool. Uh, he's, got, he's got sort of these worked stone sort of slab uh, risings here. And then, you know, he's kind of just cut himself out some holes for, for walls. But it's a good start. It's a good start. You can kind of see the difference in, in level of skill that this game would have for different people and how much time they've spent in it versus other, other players. My in-game name is, I believe, Spunkify. It's the name of my character. You mine down for three hours straight. And have I played Elder Scrolls Online? I have not played Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, to be honest, it never appealed to me. I sort of saw what it was from the start. And it just never gripped me, honestly. I never never really wanted or or had the inclination to try it uh, i have been invited to the beta weekend several times but just was not really something that i was uh it wasn't appealing to me it didn't have enough sort of unique charm now in terms of the frame rate drops and stuff like that i imagine that it would all get fixed up I and mean, we, we've had such good progress with say planet side 2 which uses the forge light engine which is this part of both the games use forge light engine uh i would imagine that uh, sony would do a good job of making it a lot more stable uh i do sort of wonder how the voxel portion will will play into players who who don't have the best systems i feel like that is going to be like the real test um forge light engine is pretty 
stable now for most people with planet side so i would think in that respects in terms of lighting and you know that that would be fine and plus you got to remember that planet side has a lot more players on the screen at once a lot more action a lot more bullets flying so there's different technical challenges in the sense that there's different um uh, things for for players to sort of render on screen, and you know, I think the voxels are going to be what's resource intensive uh, versus players on screen and tracking bullets like it was in Planet Side. All right, so we've gone ahead and collected a good amount of resources now in this area, and it's kind of just like you don't want to pass the resources up. You just don't. I mean, like you, you discover an area, you're like, man, I really want that resource, and then you know you can still be like creative and explore, find other areas to look at while still picking up stuff for yourself. All right. Looks like there's a giant box over here I wanna check out. So I'm running the game currently at high. I can run the game at ultra when I'm not streaming. And holy crap, this guy just made a giant hole, okay? Interesting. Well, this hole is doing a number on my frame rate. Welcome to his home. All right, let's jump down here. What do we got? Well, he has a floor. It's a nice floor. And yeah, he has a floor. There's a hole. Now you may be wondering, how do I get out? Well, that's what I'm wondering too. How do I get out? How did this guy get out? Why did I jump in this hole? Let's see, can we actually evac to safety? Oh boy. I may have made a mistake by jumping in this hole. I feel like this was a, a trap to begin with. I think that's how he got out. He just built himself something along the wall. I can't do that though. I feel like I'm stuck. I need the grappling hook is what I need. Oh boy. Well, let's see. To make the grappling hook, you need a lot of elemental tin and a lot of copper and a lot of tin. And I can craft a lot of copper, which is good, and craft 20, which is what I need. I should have built this before I went exploring. Why can't I type in 20? 20, there we go. Well, I do need a grappling hook, it seems, and it does seem like I have uh, inadvertently screwed myself into a hole. Not really sure how I'm going to be able to get out of this one, as I cannot make myself um, the grappling hook. Outer run and return to surface? Hmm. Alright. Now I'm really gonna have to um, make sure to finish my grappling hook quickly. Alright, so outer run and then there's no return to surface button here. Maybe slash stuck. What's, what are the commands? Die, turn, P. What are the commands supported? Where are you, come save me? I'm here. I'm on the Unmanned World Bluff Tier 1. And I am uh, due north in what appears to be a trap for newbies. I have trapped myself inside a box. There's no escape. No TP. Help! I'm trapped. Maybe somebody will come to my rescue. Well! Can't put that here. Hmm. What server? Let's go look at the server. 
Let's go ahead and get out of this, if it can actually get out of this without the game crashing. Looks like the game may crash. I think that's what is occurring. Oh, the game did crash. Well, crash is helping. We can just go ahead and log back into the game. It's not a problem. Looks like there's a upcoming downtime anyways. So, no worries there. I'm on Liberation, is the name. Ironically, the name of my server is Liberation. Unfortunately, if I go to a different server... Doesn't my character... Don't I have to make a character on that server? Let's see. See, I don't want to lose my character. I I didn't tell it to crash. I just told it to to log out, not crash. Oh, you silly alpha, you. So if I go to a different server. So I talk about pulverizers here, which is a tool that allows you to quickly do it through dirt and stone, but will allow you to harvest any resources. Uh, I have yet to actually see any sort of uh, tool that says that. So there does allude to tools and environments maybe that have yet to be added to the game. There's only two biomes currently, the desert biome and the jungle-ish biome. How far did I get in Fantasy Star Online 2? Probably only about I don't know, level 15, 20. Aha! Whoever told me to go to a different server, you're a genius. Alright, so let's see if we can log out then and go back to our claim. Logging out in this game, I guess, is code word for crashing. Because that is what happens. So we'll have to log back in now. So, you know, it's what happens when you're learning new games. Alpha games. back in all right so we'll be able to go back to our server now so that's a little bit annoying I mean I guess it's not too bad going out and in but I can imagine newbies getting trapped in there and not knowing how to get out and uh, feeling a little bit lost if you will all right so it does seem to randomly transport you back on the map and uh, where am I Where's that hole that I fell in? Hmm. I seem not to be on the same... I, I'm on the same server, but the claims are different now. Hmm. That's a little interesting. Alright, well. Let us continue our journey then. I'll have to put my outfit back on. Those tend to... There we go. Those tend to disappear sometimes. Come over here and see what we see. As my frame rate drops to two frames a second, always nice. And again, if I stop and I and just wait for it, it actually does boost back up to about 30 or 40. Uh, it's just the fact that as it loads everything into the game for the first time, uh, everything just really, really takes a beating frame rate wise. It just has a really hard time loading everything into the frame. Yeah, it says I'm not on the same, same, uh, I mean, it says I'm on the same, but I'm not. It's, it's put me somewhere else, it seems. So this guy has built himself, I mean, this is probably, like, what most people will build when they first start. Just really, just nothing but blocks and what looks like a mud castle, basically. And Hughes Claim, welcome, alright. Well, we can go inside Hughes Claim here, he's got himself a door. That closes the wrong way. That's a good door. Always nice to see. And then he's got himself, ooh, he's got himself a subterranean level here. With a nice floor mat. 
And then some rock and what have you. And then I guess he's got himself a, a uh, oops, an above, above level here. So again, I mean, <laughs> nice floral plant coming through the ground. This is, I mean, really basic stuff to begin with. This is like the sauna area, so they're gonna use the steam from the machine there. So that, I can, I can imagine that being a little bit uh, immersion breaking. They could definitely do it to where the particles don't clip through the wall. But you know, this guy probably built this after just digging out a bunch of dirt and, and, and stone and what have you. I mean, you can do a lot with just dirt and stone. It just isn't gonna look the prettiest. All right, so here's the top. We've made our way out here. And someone's built something out of stone here, but let's go out and go to a different biome type. Show off the other biome type. You may notice my character has fairly good running animations and jumping animations. Uh, the heroic movement, as they call it, is actually pretty cool. You, you'll find yourself sliding around, uh, doing double jumps all the time. Unfortunately, you can't bring open the map currently and run or move at the same time, uh, which is pretty annoying. And what is that over there? I would like to see what that is before I left, as it looks quite interesting. An interesting house here. Juliet Core's claim, welcome. Oh no, I'm, it's not that man. I, like, I'm getting fine graphic settings. It's like it's because the fact that it's streaming. And everything is is running pretty pretty horrendously. Even on medium setting settings here with the, I mean, like I said before, when I'm not streaming or anything like that, the the graphics setting is fine. It looks like it's stabilizing a little bit more. All right, so here we can see what looks to be a fractal pattern. This person. They've got a giant bed here. I mean, this is another thing you can build actually pillows and beds. So they've got. Can I? Can I actually lay down? Sit? No, I cannot sit currently. And I clip through this butt. Nice little fireplace here. And that's the thing. You can make props. There's a lot of uh, the ability to make props and lights and desks and barrels and what have you. All right. Now how? This person has somehow trapped me in here now. The clipping is a little bit weird. See here. Come on. Let me out. Ah, well. Hmm. 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 Does evac to safety actually work anymore? No. I would like to zoom out so I could actually. How did I even get in here? I know I came this way. How did my character actually get in here? Whoa, Neil, slash, Neil. I knelt. That wasn't, that was just a command. I gotta say, I'm a little bit, uh, this is like a puzzle box and I've been trapped in it. This is how rats get trapped before they're killed inadvertently. Oh look, there's Juliet Core. Hey, Juliet. You've trapped me. Please come save me, Juliet. Uh, as you can see, I, I'm kneeling, waiting for Juliet. Maybe Juliet will come. Here comes Juliet, maybe. She's apparently mining, not paying attention to me. Maybe I can whisper her. Whisper. Juliet Core. Hello, you have trapped me. Oh, whisper is in a okay. Hello, you have trapped me. I think I did it. You trapped me. I can't. I can't get out. See, it's because you're a female, and it's too high. See, it's not. So I can't get out, Juliet. See? That doesn't work for me! See, you can see, it does not work. I'm too tall, sad face. She's 
going to kill. Oh, thank you. You made a hole for me. Yay! Awesome. Now you can. Oh, thank you. I kneel for you, Juliet. I kneel for you. I kneel for you. There we go. I'm like forever in this kneel. Kneel. Sorry, it's all right. Look, we're already wearing the same outfit. We're perfect for each other. Come back, Juliet. Let us go off into the mountain, Seth. Let's close your door. We don't want anybody in there. Okay. All right, so there's Juliet. All right, let's go ahead and show you the other biome before we leave. Let's see here. <laughs> No to self. Don't don't just randomly go in people's houses. You may get trapped. And if you're trapped, you may get screwed. Alright, so here's the, the spire. And we can do this, we can actually look at the, the different worlds available here. Um Different continents. There's the Highland. Tier three. So we can go there and check that out. Can you confirm that real quick? It's good music. I'm still kneeling. So here's another biome type. This one, as you can see, has blue and red resources everywhere. What is this? Let's go see what that is on this mountaintop here, which is actually... Wow, it's right there. Okay. So we're going to have some things pop in here. Looks like they just disappeared. So this will probably be the last few things that we look at for today. But you can, guys can get a general sense of how EverQuest Next Landmark currently plays and how it looks. Those of you who may be wondering whether or not to purchase a founder spec, I would definitely say that it's fun. Although the um, the optimization issues right now really have me saying wait for most people. I mean, I've got a fairly beefy computer, and even now, you know, it it struggles. It really does. And even without streaming, um, it can it can drop in frame rates pretty pretty drastically all the time. And there doesn't really seem to be a way right now to sort of fix that. I mean, you can. You can turn it to medium, you can turn it to high, and maybe your your overall frame rate will improve, but there's nothing really you can do to sort of prevent it from dripping, drip, uh, dropping down rather, to simply like 40 or so. Now, I can't actually get up there. This guy has, this guy's doing like weird art projects up here or something like that. He's got a bunch of cubes and whatnot, some different layers, maybe he's playing some chess. Alright, so why don't we go ahead then and... Uh, just sort of wander our over. There's like, hey, look, another pit. There's another pit. That's where players unsuspectingly go to die. All right, so let's come down here and take a look at a couple of these. And then we'll go ahead and uh, end this stream. No loitering around the manor, he says. Well, your manor is quite the manor. It's more like a castle. What if I come into your house? Is that loitering? Or is that breaking and entering? Your door is already open. And I like the fact that he's made miniature versions of all of his... You can actually scale these. He's made miniature versions of all his equipment. Everything is just nicely laid in here. This, I mean, this is a one-bedroom manor. It's, you've got so much of this... This tower and everything like this, but you're only one bedroom. You must have like a secret door somewhere. See, I would want to build something and then make a secret door where like you can't actually get in unless you find a secret door. And the secret door could be like in the ground or something like that. Something crazy like that, you know? How the secret door like open up like this? Rotate it to where it opens up and faces up. I would, I would say partly why the choppy lag is most likely because the fact that I'm running around constantly so it's always loading in new stuff uh, and the fact that of course I'm also streaming it at the same time.
But yeah, it's a, I mean, I can tell you for sure that it's not actually using all of my resources. It merely is just, like, like you can't do a lot with it at a time. It's like a little toy maker shop in here with everything tiny, miniaturized. But alright, you can get a basic sense of what everybody creates here. You know, nice use of underground layers. So this is where they're going to have the dungeon, it looks like. Ooh. Another. Ah, this is like the sexy palace here. So I'm just going to like sit in here and wait for this person. And uh, apparently kneel because I'm in a perpetual kneel cycle. I like the fact that he's made two of these tiny little ones. It's pretty awesome there. Two tiny little vaults. But yeah, that's going to go ahead and end my live stream here of EverQuest Landmark. The alpha version, of course. It is subject to change. Everything is probably going to change in some respects. But if you guys want to learn more about the game, or how to suggest you check down below at mobot.com for more information, read our previews, articles, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Hopefully when I've already created my... I can show you guys my treehouse of wonders. But until then, guys, I'll see you later. Spunkify, out. Later, guys.